All right, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone on this one. I'm going to look at uh, the second page. I'm going to do number one and number four at the same time. And I'm going to, I'll change the numbers up in a minute. But I want you to remember, we just said that if, if two segments are tangent to the circle, and they come together, then these two segments have to be the same length. So if you're looking at the perimeter of the circle or you're looking for X, um, and I think they say they want to know uh, the total length of this side. And I apologize, my, my picture isn't as beautiful as the one on the page, but I, I did the best I could with what I have. They want to know the total length of this side. And you can figure out the entire perimeter just by matching up congruent segments. And I'm going to mark the congruent segments in different colors. So I'm going to start out here with the red. And this segment here is going to be the same as this segment here. This segment down here, and I know they're they're not as long as the actual segments, but forgive me for that. Those two in blue, and then lastly in green, these longer segments all the way down to here and all the way up to there. And they should they should meet, but I'm I'm just showing you which ones match. I don't want to destroy the picture. So we have the two reds should be congruent, so therefore this up here is 13 as well. I'll come out to the greens. If this, if this is 17, then this long one has to be 17. And last but not least, if this is 10, then this has to be 10. Now, if I know that this is 13 and this is 10, I can just add them together. Um, it's a uh, 13 plus 10 and you could have done that in your head I know you could have done that in your head but I want to write it out so you see what it looks like um, there it is if you want to find the entire perimeter all you do is add them all up right so we have 23 on this side we have 27 on this side and then we have 30 over here Right, because we added those two together, and we added those two together, and we added those two together, and we had the whole thing. Now, if I want to add them all up, I've done it all in my head, and I already know that my perimeter is 70, uh, sorry, 80. Woo! Uh, but that's up to you. It asks, to, asks you to find the perimeter. That's the whole idea. Um... The, the one with the square is pretty simple, uh, and even the, the irregular figures should be easy to solve uh, if, by chance, I'm going to change this now and do something just a little bit more difficult, but it should not be a problem. This is not a problem on your sheet, so don't think that I'm giving you a problem that you need to put down on your sheet. I'm just going to say, what if? What if they give you an expression instead of an actual value, right? What if they say this is 10, but this is x plus 4? Well... Okay, we'll solve it the same way. We know that these two things are, you know, are the, are the blue guys, you know, and they should be congruent. So if they're congruent, just put an equal sign in the middle and say x plus 4 equals 10, and then solve that way. Now, what number plus 4 equals 10? We already know that, and you solve it this way. And x equals 6. 
All right, so we're good. Everything's great there. So that's that's another part of how you're solving things on this page. Or there's one that says 2x equals 8, and you'll solve it by doing a little bit of division on both sides. It's not a difficult process. It just It's just a, a way to get you to look at congruent segments in a different way. It just tells you that those two segments have to be congruent because they're tangent to the circle. Now, please, please, please forgive me. I'm going to I'm going to make this a right angle even though it's not a right angle. I'm going to pretend it's a right angle because we have one that that is a, a right angle on there. And I'm going to put the numbers in it. I'm going to make this the hypotenuse um, because it's directly across from the right angle. Uh, and it's labeled that this segment is 2 and this segment is 4. And then this segment out here is 6. All right. Now, the good news about this is we're looking for the hypotenuse. And... We've been given all the information that we need. Now, you, you'd say to yourself, well, Mr. Sokol, I don't have that segment there. But you actually do because you've been given its congruent segment on the other side. So you would first label that as 2. Okay? And now you have 8 and 6. And those are our two legs. So... We can say x squared, the hypotenuse squared, equals um, 8 squared plus 6 squared. Oh my gosh, this is so easy, right? Again, it's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, but you don't need to know that off the top of your head. You'll just say x squared equals 8 times 8 is 64 plus 6 times 6 is 36, and we'll add those together. We'll say x squared equals 100, and look at that. That's one of, one of those perfect squares that everybody knows by heart, but I'm still going to rewrite it just because I'm a mean math teacher, and we force you to rewrite and do the math on that one, and we all know that x equals 10. Darn it, I solved one for you. But that's how you do it. That's how you get through this. And you should be able to, to get through the rest of this. But I wanted to give you a couple of days to suss through this and get through um, understanding these concepts. All right? And uh, that's it. That's how you solve both pages. Give you sort of a break for the next couple of days.